Hey guys, Marissa with Lingua Abilities here. Today I wanted to show you how to use Smart Notebook. This is part of the Smart Learning software. Um, this is a subscription program. However, um, there are some ways that you can try out some of the activities for free uh, online. So um, if you're interested, uh, the Smart Notebook software, you can find out more at smarttech.com. And in their products section, you can look for the Smart Learning Suite. So then looking at a pricing calculator to see how much it would cost, they would give you some options of how many years of su subscription you would like. And of course, if you go for a longer subscription, it's going to be less expensive. How many therapists or teachers you're looking to purchase for. And then how many of them are using this as a uh, smart board or a smart interactive display. So if you're just looking for yourself, for example, for one year, it's going to cost you $109. Um, so just to see how it goes up with, let's say, five therapists, you're up at 545 for one year, but five therapists for four years, of course, is going to go down a little bit per year, even though it's a higher price. You can figure out the math on that, that um, it's not as expensive to do for um, one year versus four years. So um, that's where you can go find it. Let's jump into the actual nitty gritty of how to use it. So I'm going to show you something that I've already created, but I'll also show you how to create these things. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so as you can see, things save as a notebook file. This is just an example of some uh, treatment things that I've already created, but I will show you how to create them yourself. Takes a little bit for a smart notebook to load just because it's so graphics heavy and it has a lot of interactive pieces to it. So here's one of the first things that I created. Uh, this is a simple blank game board um, that I borrowed offline. And then I added in a spinner. Um, now, you can find any sort of thing that you want to bring in. You're able to copy and paste it or print it, uh, kind of like you print an Adobe PDF. You print to PDF and you print it to Smart Notebook and it will bring it into the application. And I'll show you how to do that. But I wanted to show you quickly how this is a really nice way to do interactive kind of drag and drop activities. So um, the kids can in sharing my mouse, move their little icons around, and they have the fun of clicking a spinner. So to find these things like the spinner and the dice, you'll go over here to this little picture icon, and you can search for a variety of things. So if we're looking for the spinner, you have to make sure that you click search rather than clicking enter. I found that that just doesn't work then it will be under um, interactive and multimedia. But there's other things that you can look at. You can see things that people have made that you can bring into here. Uh, you can see pictures that they have available. Now, they're not always the most sensical pictures, but they're there. And then the interactive piece has the spinner that we're looking for. So you simply drag and drop this where you want it to go. And it will populate that for you. Now, you can see I've made mine a little bit bigger, so you can adjust the size on it as you see fit. And what's cool about it then is it has this little gear icon. So if you click this, we can come down if it'll let us. We might have to pull it up a little bit for us to work on it here. Okay, if we click the gear icon, there we go. You can see the different segments that are available. So you can add or delete segments. Only want three, only want two. <coughs> So you can add or delete segments if you want one, two, three, four. You know, you can make as many segments as you see fit. And then you can also label them and change the color. So if you want this, oh, I've decided I want this to be black. Then that changes the color for me. And they don't have to be numbers. They could be a uh, speech sound that you're working on or the position of a sound that you want the kid to say the sound in. Or if you're working on, you know, any other variety of skills, uh, let's say this is how you decide what you're going to do next. Um, and so you want it to be your sensory activities or whatever you have, you can put into your spinner. So be creative with that. And if you click off, 
It usually will get rid of it. Let's see if we click the gear again. Okay, there we go. And then you can click this and it will spin for you. Of course, you can move it back down to where you want with the little pull thing there. So that's pretty cool. This is a nice way to do some interactive things. And there's lots of things that people have already made that you can bring into it. If you go back to this little page icon here, you'll see the pages that you already have loaded. Now, if this is a new document, you'll simply have a blank screen just like this. So with that in mind, I'll show you how you can use this as a whiteboard on a blank screen. Let me click this. Now, if you want to create another page that's blank, simply add page here. If you want to delete, you can delete the page. So I'll show you, we just delete that and it'll go back to the one previous or we can add another page so that we have our whiteboard. Now up here, there are a variety of tools that you can use for annotation, drawing, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so as a whiteboard, it automatically starts you on the cursor, but you can come over here and use pens. And there's some really cool pens that my clients like. Uh, if you go into pen types, you can choose from calligraphic pens, highlighters, so if you're working on a worksheet together. And the really fun one is the creative pen. I call it the crazy pen because it's got all these cool patterns that the kids really like. So we can have this rainbow pen or the smiley face pen, the flowers. And what's cool about it is if we're working on... Um, like a tic-tac-toe activity, a lot of times we'll use the stars to make our tic-tac-toes. Or you could grab the marker and, you know, decide that you wanted to do your X's and O's. That's cool, too. Then it also has an eraser. So if you want to get rid of just a single part of what you've just drawn, you can erase like that. And it has different sizes, of course. If you accidentally did something, oh, I didn't mean to erase that, you can come back over here and click Undo and that will bring it back up just like in a regular Word document or something. So we're going to erase all of this so I can show you some other things. It also has shapes, so if you like to draw different shapes, this is another good uh, method for doing like a tic-tac-toe. You can draw in the hearts. There's a variety of different shapes that you can pick from. If you want to say that you're done with an activity, you can give it a check mark. And of course, these are all customizable by the uh, fill color and outline color and the line style and, and all sorts of stuff. So you can really adapt it. There's more shapes over here, some polygon tape shapes. Um, if you want to fill in like in MS Paint, you can do that. Um, usually I think you have to create some sort of shape first. So let's see if we can fill in this. There we go. Fill in the check mark. And then of course you have a typing feature also where you have text, a variety of different fonts that you can use and sizes. So this is really good for filling out um, PDFs together. So as an example, this is a PDF that I found um, as kind of an intro activity. And so this is really fun for the kids to take the pen and then they can color in different things. Maybe they want a crayon. Let's get yellow for the stars. And they can kind of draw in here and make it, you know, unique to them. Uh, and then if you want to type, instead of having to write, like in, uh, we've talked Zoom, you know, has annotation. Um, if you don't have Zoom or you don't like Zoom's annotation, this is a nice alternative. Or, um, you know, if you have another one like GoToMeeting that doesn't allow you to do anything but writing, um, you can come in here and use the text feature so that you can actually go through worksheets together without having to write every single thing, you know, with your name. Like we've talked about how good we get at writing our names with a mouse. You don't have to do that anymore. Suddenly you can change it to be, you know, this color in it in a fun font. And then we'll we'll put our name here by writing it. So there's lots of flexibility here. You can see how much this is going to give you for working through PDFs if you're doing reading activities, writing activities, reading comprehension, you know, anything that you're going to need to annotate or add text to, um, it can be really helpful. So um, you can bring in any PDF that you find. And how you do that <clears throat> is by going into either um, your folder and then simply finding the PDF, or you can pull it in through Smart Notebook itself by opening this way. 
Okay. Now this wants to close the one that I have open. So usually what I do is just come in through a folder. So let's say that we wanted to pull up this um, I Spy game today. This will be a fun one. This is just a PDF that I found online. I believe it's a freebie from Teachers Pay Teachers. Now sometimes it does take a little bit to pop up and come into Smart Notebook, but I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so you've got your PDF. This is a cool one uh, made by Adapting for Autism on Teachers Pay Teachers. Definitely check them out. Um, and so it's meant to be printed, because if we come down here, you can see how to use it where she says that she puts them in page protectors and then they use dry erase markers. You could laminate them. But the cool thing about telepractice is you don't have to do any of that. You can just pull in this document and then use the mouse and the screen share to share it with your clients. So this is how you get it into um, Smart Notebook from a PDF. You come here and print. And then you can see that this is the last printer that I used is the Smart Notebook, but you, there's all your printers that you might have if you want to print to PDF. If you want to send to Smart Notebook, it's usually down at the bottom. And then I will typically go to the page that I want and click current page so that I don't have to print all of them. If you do, it's not a big deal. I usually don't want the entire document, so I just click the one that I want. And I try and match it for this, the shape that it is, the orientation, so this is landscape. That will help a bit. And I always make sure if it's color that I don't have it in grayscale because it's not actually printing anything. It's just porting it into Smart Notebook. So then we print. It takes a second to flatten and it should pop right up in Smart Notebook. Here we go. You can see it blink when it's ready and it will pull that up for you. So here's where you can bring in your little shapes. If you wanna do a star when you're done with that, or you can bring in your pen and use the crazy pen or the creative pen to put a little star here, or whatever you wanna use for your check marks. Maybe you wanna use a highlighter and decide that you're going to circle the things that you find. You know, that's there's lots of different ways to do it. So that's how you port in PDFs. Word documents, all that sort of stuff. Anything that you can print, you can bring into Smart Notebook. Now, some other things that you can do with Smart Notebook, if we come back here, is to use activities that either you create or other people have made specifically for the Smart Notebook software. So here's an example of one that I pulled off of Smart Exchange, and I'll show you this website. But it's really cool because there's lots of drag and drop activities. So uh, a simple one here, we're um, sorting between the SCR scra and the STR str sounds. Um, and so if you, oop, I see I'm on text, not the little cursor. That's important to make sure that you switch back and forth. I'll have kids who are on the pen and they're desperately trying to click. Why isn't this working? Well, because you're on the pen. So make sure that you switch that back over for your clients. So anyway, if you're on the cursor here and you bring it up to the right one, it will let the little alien in the ship. If you bring it up to the wrong one, he'll bounce out. So it's self-correcting there. So there's some nice little games. Where I find these is on the Smart Exchange. So this is um, exchange.smarttech.com and it's full of free classroom resources. So let's say that we want to go teach a kid about a new uh, letter of the alphabet. Today we're going to learn about R. I typically type something like R or R sound, and you'll get a variety of activities that people have created. Of course, you can filter by what grade it's meant for. If you know, oh, this is for a smaller kid, I wanna make sure that it's age appropriate. You can also look to see if there's anything for your specialty. So maybe you wanna look at all subjects, but um, you know there is one for if you're a speech therapist, there's usually special education or speech therapy. If you're an occupational therapist, I think there's also one there for you. Um, there's some nice mental health things in here. And then you can also sort by lesson type or resource type if you want a lesson, an activity like a game. There's assessments in here, all sorts of cool stuff. So the one that I am going to bring up just to show you how this works is a name that sound activity. So we click this. You'll get a nice preview of what it looks like each page that's involved. And this is exactly what you're going to see. 
So somebody's brought in pictures and different labels for them that we can use. Now, either if you have Smart Notebook, you can download it and then bring it into your um, Smart Notebook account here. Okay. So we're going to download. It downloads it to your downloads folder, just as you would anywhere else. If you go ahead and double click it, it will pull it right up into Smart Notebook. Or you could open it from your downloads file or wherever you have things downloaded. And again, it takes a little bit to open up, but when it does, you're ready to go. And there you go. You have the thing that you saw on Smart Exchange. Oh, sometimes it wants to open up too. That's okay. You'll have the file that you saw on Smart Exchange. And then you can have your student, you know, drag and drop it. Drag and drop activities are always great for telepractice. So if you get it on the right one, put them right there. I don't think this one is self-correcting if you put it somewhere else. No, some of them are. So that's, if you have Smart Notebook, you're free to bring it in. If you don't, you can still use a lot of these activities. You can save to the um, Smart System Online, and a lot of them will actually let you play the game online, which is pretty cool. Now, it's a free sign up. You're able to um, make an account without having to pay anything, and you'll actually get access to play these activities um, here in the online suite. Um, a little, some of them are a little clunky, um, just because they're not meant to be used online as much. Uh, but if you don't want to pay the hundred or so dollars per year for Smart Notebook, then that is an alternative for you. So in short, Smart Notebook is really robust. There's lots of cool things that you can do with it. Um, there's other multimedia things that we didn't go over, like dice. Um, and other cool interactive things that you'll find in this interactive and multimedia section. So play around with it, search in it, see what sort of activities you can create or adapt that already exist so that you can really make your telepractice more robust. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.